We're back again in John DeLeo's basement, <laughs> talking about his book and his No Small Parts. We're going to um, talk now about Jan Sterling, who, who had a brief appearance in Mystery Street. Yes. Jan Sterling in Mystery Street from 1950 is spotlighted in my book, There Are No Small Parts, 100 Outstanding Film Performances with Screen Time of 10 Minutes or Less. And Jan Sterling is in Mystery Street. There she is with Elsa Lanchester. Uh, she's in it for just eight minutes. And it's a not that well known, but very good example of film noir. You know, one of those dark crime pictures of the late 40s into the mid 50s, directed by John Sturges. And it is a film about a murder. And Jane, Jan Sterling is the murder victim. So her eight minutes happen in the first 11 minutes of this movie. Um, so even though she's there and then gone, she's talked about for the rest of the movie. So her presence hovers over the rest of it. But of course, I love her work. So even if they didn't talk about her, I'd, I would still be thinking about her for the rest of the movie because I love her and she would hover over it for me anyway. Um, interesting thing about Jan Sterling is she specialized in this kind of tough dame kind of role, uh, those bad girls of those film noir pictures. Um, up to no good, scheming, a little trashy, tardy, all those uh, wonderful qualities that we love in uh, women from those films like Gloria Graham, Marie Windsor, Audrey Totter. She's probably my favorite. And what's fascinating about her as an actress was that, although that was essentially her type, she actually came from a privileged Manhattan background, similar to Humphrey Bogart, where their movie essence was not who they really were, or the flip side of, you know, Cary Grant being a poor kid who became the epitome of being debonair and elegant. And so your screen essence doesn't always correlate with who you really are or were. Um, and uh, probably her most famous role of, of this type was in Ace in the Hole with Kirk Douglas, directed by Billy Wilder, in which she's fantastic as the wife of the guy who's stuck in the, the mine, mining cave-in, and she's just out for all she can get. And so uh, she did get one Oscar nomination for The High and the Mighty, the big John Wayne airplane picture of 1954, but she really never got the recognition she deserved so um, I love her in this movie, Mystery Street, but she's great in two women's prison movies, too. What are they? Uh, Caged and Women's Prison. And so, she, you know, if there's a women's prison movie, you expect that she's going to be in one of the cells or one of the bunks. <laughs> she's bound to be there. And you hope she's there because she's going to be fun. And in real life, she's married to the actor Paul Douglas, another terrific character actor we probably don't talk about enough anymore. You told me that noir films are where there's like an anti-hero. Yeah, it's usually, yeah, I'd say a lot of the guys. Are they also low budget? Is that a characteristic it, of them? Well, I think one of the reasons people think that a film noir is, resonates so much today is because a lot of them were low budget. So censorship with the, the people watching in terms of the, the censors and the, the Hayes Code and uh, the production code, um, weren't paying attention to these movies as much as the big movies because they were low budget and, you know, they didn't care as much. So they got a lot of stuff in in terms of sex and violence that might not have passed uh, in bigger films. And so they're fascinating to kind of dissect. And yes, a lot of the main characters often detectives with a with some kind of past or something uh, shady and so there's a lot of grays the, even though they're black and white movies there's a lot of gray in the storytelling a lot of grays in the characters and even if it's a, a a leading man type that you like and admire there's always a, he can be a chump usually over a woman or something and so mm -hmm. like i said there's always a kind of there's things to contemplate and figure out and uh they, they just resonate because they're, they're there's more going on than just the the crime plot it seems like the low budget almost forces the creativity because you have to focus on story right more. you can't have big explosions and things like right. that so um that might be part of it you think so yes visually often the low budget adds to the kind of luster of the black and white the use of fogginess to block out the fact that the set only goes so far <laughs> that kind of thing 
And so you're right. Yeah, that can be, uh, you know, limitations can be such a boost to creativity because, okay, within this, what can we do? Mystery Street's kind of a medium sized one. It's made at MGM. So low budget at MGM is like a budget everywhere else. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, the stars of the Ricardo Montalban is the star of the movie. So and he wasn't a major star. Um, but it's a, it's a it's a good thriller, and it's kind of a mix of like that kind of docudrama of a procedural of how you solve a murder, and so we uh, we don't really actually even see the killer. It's her married lover, and she's pregnant, and so you know why she's kind of uh, stalking him uh, to pay attention to her in a kind of fatal attraction kind of way, but it backfires, and like I said, she doesn't last beyond the eleven minute point in the movie. That's another one I'm going to watch. Jern Sterling, if you like her, she must be good. <laughs> you won't be disappointed. Thanks so much, John. Thanks.